we were doing okay until uh, we got a contract with the Navy. It was a fun contract building uh, 12 helmets, racy, good-looking helmets. Operation Ivy Bells challenged the U.S. Navy to use top-of-the-line technology in order to wiretap underwater communication cables found within the USSR's territorial waters. So they wanted a submarine that could sit down alongside that, that cable in 600 feet of water and have divers that are capable of going out and putting a listening device on this line. That program was alive and well up until 1980, and it was spooky work. We were in, a, in an old building we had, and we are just working away. And a guy pulls up with e-license plates. And he came in and he had on a single piece suit. And he went right over to me and said, are you Bob Kirby? I says, I am. He said, get in my car and shut up. I got in his car and he said, uh, now Mr. Kirby, this is a super secret job that you're working. I'm here to tell you, if you tell anybody about this ever, you're a dead man. Now, Mr. Kirby, uh, do you believe me? Yes, I sure do. You look like a spook to me. And I didn't tell anybody for over 30 years. The Cold War was over because they couldn't start anything that we didn't know about. So it was a good effort. I was working for a company, WSM. He got a telephone call from Cameron, the director of the movie, The Abyss needed helmets built, and he was trying to get a hold of Bev Morgan to do it. He got a hold of Scott Millard, and Scott says, you don't want Bev, he's hard to deal with. He said, you need Bob Kirby. So they hired me to build about 12 helmets. They had to be movie actors' helmets. That meant that it had a great big viewports in the front and a light that would shine on the diver's face. I built the helmets. And I went back to uh, where they're shooting this. I ended up doing some of the uh, stunt diving. It came around to how are these movie actors going to be able to use this equipment? Well, that's easy. We'll just hire Bob. So I was there to train him hard. Keeping up with movie equipment people was tough. You had to be sharp and you had to move. And I found out with Jim Cameron, he never said no. He would ask you to do something that was just about impossible. And I always say, oh, sure, okay, Jim, sure. Have a cup of coffee and I'm gonna think about it. And in 10 minutes, I'm gonna come back and give me my answer. In 10 minutes time, it gave me time to figure out how I was gonna do it. It gave him time to cool off. I, I, I enjoyed the movie work. Bob was a diver's diver. He was a consummate joker. He would always be pulling practical jokes and he always had that sparkle in his eye. Bob was everybody's mate to a degree, you know, a really open-hearted, kind guy. He gave back. He loved to impart his knowledge and his experiences with other people, primarily young people. He was a teacher at heart. You know, it was like, starting up a basketball game and Michael Jordan turns up. <laughs> so that's how it was with Kirby. When I was 19 years old and we went to Diving Systems International's booth, stars in our eyes and, oh well, gosh, we're gonna be a commercial diver. Bob Kirby and Bev Morgan were the only two people that would talk to us. They knew that we were the future. You know, they really changed the world. They got us to new places and they revolutionized that diving industry and we'll miss them. How did we pull this off? Well, we're old abalone divers. Bob Radcliffe, Murray Black, Jerry Todd, all the old timers, all the Black Fleet are all abalone divers. So what makes them so special? They're just guys, right? Well, yes and no. They're, most of them are Marines, been shot up a little bit, knew how to shoot back. They knew how to organize. They knew how to deal with people, how to go in the bar and get your tender out of the bar and keep him sober enough that he could work the next day. Everything that you did in the Apollonia business was um, a test 
to see if he could survive. It was always cold and miserable and wet and the boat was broken down or he had a big swell. Oh, there was always a reason why it was hard to get the abalone. These old GIs had what it take to do it. And then when I got out in the business world, they survived. Thank you.